The South African national budget is highly dependent on the individual taxpayer. What are the inherent risks of this dynamic? In this video, David Ansara of the CRA unpacks this further. All right. Now, okay, so now, now we've spoken about tax and then now we speak, okay, we spoke about really the government situation and how it's, um, and how its situation is really kind of getting more dire. Now, how does this really impact the citizens? Because we just spoke about um, uh, the tax, I mean, not the tax, sorry, <laughs> pension funds. And um, the pension funds obviously seem to be um, a viable option. But really, how does this impact citizens in general, the government's um, uh, fiscal situation? Right, so Duma, that's an excellent question. And ultimately, it is citizens that support the government in its activities through paying of tax. And if you have to actually break down who pays tax in South Africa, uh, in the 2019-2020 financial year, uh, personal income tax amounted to about 39% of all taxes that are paid. So you essentially have a very small uh, base of about uh, 5 million people or so who are assessed taxpayers, according to SARS, and, and they support 40% of, 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 uh, of the entire revenue collection. Right. Um, but it doesn't end there, of course. We also pay a sales tax, which is a value-added tax, which is about uh, 6% uh, of, of all revenue collected. And then uh, corporates pay about 16% of, of all tax. Mm. And, you know, so there's a very high dependency on individual taxpayers. And the more money that individuals are taxed, the less disposable income they have to pay for uh, other goods and services, which then goes into generating more economic activity. Uh, so in economics, there's a term called the Laffer curve, right. which uh, demonstrates that the more you tax, at a certain point, there's an inflection point where actually if you raise taxes too high, then your revenues start to diminish. Also bear in mind that many high net worth individuals uh, are able to structure their taxes in a way that, that minimizes their tax exposure. Some of them are offshoring uh, a lot of their capital uh, to, to other tax, uh, tax light jurisdictions. Um, and so, you, you know, you really can't afford to ratchet up taxes too much on the high income earners. Uh, bear in mind that also, of course, with value added tax, which a couple of years ago went up to, to 15%, mm. uh, it's not only the wealthy are paying that, but also uh, ordinary uh, people, uh, working class, middle class people. So, uh, and, you know, there are a number of official taxes, mm -hmm. uh, the sugar tax, the uh, the sin taxes on alcohol and tobacco, uh, the fuel levy as well, and all of these add up. But there are a number of unofficial taxes as well. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you may have heard the term the black tax, uh, a lot of people are having to support mm -hmm. dependents in their extended family or community. So that means less income for themselves. Um, and I don't think that that's uh, only uh, in black communities, right. it's also um, across South Africa. I think that that's increasingly becoming the case. And uh, there are also uh, other expenses that the state ought to be providing in exchange for that tax money, which it isn't. So if you're a middle class person, you need private health care, you need private security. Typically, you want your child to be in a private school. So these are all additional fees that mean that your income is now being really stretched. And if you add all these back of the envelope taxes together, you're looking at about 60% of your income is going towards tax in one form or another. Mm -hmm. uh, so the official top rate of 45% marginal rate uh, is, is probably a very conservative number to look at. And, you know, I think uh, it's, it's, if you had to calculate this in terms of the time uh, that you are working throughout the year, that means that essentially you're working from the 1st of January up until about the end of July, purely for meeting your tax expenses. Sure. And then uh, the rest is, is, is for you. So right. you know, that's not an ideal situation. And you know, I think also taxpayers are beginning to become quite frustrated and are noting the breakdown in, in services and the quality of governance in the country. 
And we're beginning to ask, well, where is my money going? Mm -hmm. And what duty do I have to keep this elaborate patronage distribution corruption machine going? Uh, and I think that's a very fair question to ask. So, you know, what you, you could be seeing, uh, and I'm not saying that this is a, a good thing, but you could be seeing a, a sense of a, a burgeoning tax revolt. Mm -hmm. The taxpayers are starting to say, well, that's, you know, enough is enough. And that will have huge consequences for the government in terms of its, its ability to, to manage its finances. Um, but I would, if, if that were to materialize, I would lay the blame firmly at the door of the government itself. Uh, you know, the government has pursued policies that has, that has driven capital away from South Africa. Um, so uh, that is a, a massive own goal that the government has, has scored against itself. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, and talking about own goals, I mean, we've also seen with this whole uh, pandemic, they've uh, m effectively made certain industries illegal. And as a result of doing that, they've lost tax mm. revenue. And to recover, they've increased taxes. And I mean, um, well, one of the frustrating things that I've seen is that people who are below the tax threshold, um, they are getting taxed more, if you think about it. If you take all these um, official taxes into account, besides the income tax. And it just seems to worsen the relationship. I mean, now talking about a tax revolt, I mean probably those with money will try to attempt to do it, not to say that, um, that they should. It's not a recommendation. But I mean, those who are below the tax threshold, I mean, I mean, like now, what's the situation for them? I mean, is it getting any better? Is it getting any worse? I mean, what, what should they expect? Well, I, I think that's a great point that you make, Duma. I mean, if you are somebody, for example, who relies on a taxi to get to and from work, I mean, essentially, you're paying tax in the form of the fuel levy, and most of that fuel levy goes to support the road accident fund, mm -hmm. uh, which historically has uh, been good at paying out victims of, of road accidents. But today uh, has, I don't have the figures in front of me, but the liabilities that the road accident fund carries is absolutely enormous and starting to be seen by credit ratings agencies as a as a risk to the, the credit worthiness of, of South Africa as a whole. Hmm. Uh, you know, so and a lot of those monies have been misallocated uh, and abused. Um, and so you as an ordinary commuter using a taxi are now subsidizing this. Um, if you are unable to um, rely on energy, for example, uh, a reliable source of electricity from, from ESCOM, you might not be able to to run your your small shop uh, if your refrigerator goes off in the middle of the night and you wake up to find that all of uh, the meat in your butchery has has gone off. That's a significant loss to you. So, uh, you know, all of these uh, inefficiencies, this misallocation of, of funds, this has a direct impact on service delivery and on people's quality of life. And my, my colleague, Gabran van Heerden, uh, at the Center for Risk Analysis, he's an analyst there. He wrote a very good report on the quality of life in South Africa. Uh, and we quantified the quality of life across various provinces and developed an index score. And if anybody wants to, uh, to, to get in touch with me, I'll, I'll give you uh, our contact details to get hold of that report. Um, and it shows that uh, you know, the quality of service delivery, particularly in the rural provinces, is, is pretty much collapsing. I mean, if you think of the Amatole uh, district municipality in the Eastern Cape, uh, they are essentially unable to, to pay salaries mm. of, of their officials. They, they just cannot do it. Um, so when we talk about the big picture macroeconomy and uh, the 500 billion rand deficit, uh, you know, this is not just some abstract thing. It, it has a direct impact on the quality of life and the standard of living in South Africa. Uh, so I think it's really important to bear that in mind uh, that we're essentially living on borrowed time mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to when it comes to our fiscal situation. And actually, living on borrowed time was the the title that we gave to our report on the budget, which I can also share with your viewers if they like. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the CRA channel. Mm -hmm.